What's up guys? So I'm out here in 90 degree weather in a black shirt because I make poor life decisions. And because today we're going to be talking about air conditioning. So down here in the south, air conditioning is pretty important. It gets pretty hot for a good portion of the year and especially with darker colored cars, it's basically an oven in here. But before you're gonna to try to service your own AC, it's important to know where the problem is coming from. So the first thing you need to do is get in your car, turn the air conditioner on. If there's no air coming out of the vents, that's not the air conditioning system that's the problem. That's more than likely an issue with the blower motor or the power to the blower motor. And I'm not gonna cover that part of it in this video, though I will cover how to diagnose that stuff in a separate video later. Uh, in this car, we do have air coming out. As a matter of fact, the air that's coming out is fairly decently cold. So this is more of a maintenance kind of a thing, not so much a repair. So before we get into what to do, it's important to understand how the air conditioning works so that you know what you're looking for. So first, we're gonna go talk about that. Okay, so to explain how the air conditioning system in a car works, I'm gonna pull an engineering explained here and uh, get the whiteboard out. All right, the basic components are fairly simple. You're going to have an AC compressor, and that's a marvelous drawing of an AC compressor, and I don't believe anyone who says otherwise. This basically takes your refrigerant and compresses it. Freon is actually a gas at normal atmospheric pressure and temperatures. This is going to be compressing it, which is also going to heat it up. So you're going to have two lines that come out of there. The high pressure line is going to go out of there down to a device called the condenser. The condenser basically looks like a radiator and sits in front of the radiator in front of the car. And this is gonna take this high pressure, high temperature gas, cool it through here, and it's gonna exit this as a high pressure liquid. Then it's gonna travel from that to a piece called an orifice tube. The orifice tube is basically where there is an orifice, I know that makes sense, right? That allows the high pressure liquid to have the pressure released which is going to make it want to go back to its gaseous state immediately and when it does that which part of the time that it's doing that is going to be happening here which is in the evaporator core and what when it does that it's going to cool down it's going to suck all the energy out of the stuff around it to go back to being a gas so this is going to cool this area which is your evaporator core which is inside the car in the dash in the HVAC box then the blower motor can blow air through the evaporator core and it will come out cold which is how the air that comes into your car is cold then the Freon is going to continue or the refrigerant is going to continue out of the evaporator core to a device called an accumulator also called a receiver dryer and this is basically a device that's full of a material that absorbs moisture so it's basically there to dry the charge afterwards and remember it's in a gaseous state at this point but it's cooled down now then from there it's going to return to the compressor to be recompressed and then it goes back through the entire cycle again that's what keeps this cold that's what keeps your air conditioning working so as usual the car we're using as an example here is my 99 grand prix gtp um, I should mention that there are air conditioning systems that do not use orifice tubes. They instead use something called a thermal expansion valve. Um, I may get into that a little bit more later, but for this example, this car does have an orifice tube. This is a pretty traditional setup. Just to show you where on a Grand Prix these parts are. Down there, hard at work, is your air conditioning compressor. Compressing fluid through these lines into the condenser which sits just on the other side of this it's actually a little hard to see but there's a line right here that is your high pressure line that runs up to here through the orifice tube into the evaporator core which is at the back there it comes out of that through the low pressure line back up here to this 
accumulator, and then back to the compressor. So that's all the parts. But if you're just trying to service it, the important things to know are where the service fittings are. On a Grand Prix, your low pressure side fitting is right here. You can see right there. And your high pressure service fitting is right there. Now, as far as DIY at home uh, charging of AC systems, you're not really gonna use the high pressure side. If you have a set of manifold gauges, you can hook them to both and it does give you a lot more information about what the system is doing. But if you're just trying to top it off, which is pretty much what we're doing in this case, all you really need is that low pressure fitting. So there are a lot of different recharge things you can buy at stores, whether it's auto parts stores or Walmart. This is a cheap one that I picked up at Walmart. The important thing to note here is that it has a gauge. Do not buy recharge stuff that does not have a gauge unless you have a gauge at home. Because Freon is not like coolant. You can't just fill it until it's full because if the pressures are too high, the system won't work. If the pressures are too low, they won't work. The pressures need to be correct. So it is specific. What you would need to do to determine whether or not you need a charge in the first place is you're gonna take this fitting made for the low pressure side and you're gonna hook it to the low pressure service port. You're gonna look at this gauge with the car running, with the air conditioning turned on all the way. If you look at this gauge, it tells you pretty much where you're looking at. However, be aware that the low side pressure will change depending on the temperature outside. That's why if you notice, everything is in a range. So pretty much 25 to 45 is your operating range. Looking at this range, if it's hotter outside, you're gonna be closer to the top. If it's colder outside, you're gonna be closer to the bottom. So don't fill it to 45 PSI when it's 40 degrees outside. I don't know why you would be doing AC at that point anyway, but regardless, be aware of that. Some of these will have rotating gauge faces that'll give you a temperature range and you set it to what temperature it is outside and it gives you a tighter range, which is fine. I know what this car usually runs, so I know what I'm looking for. All right, so we're gonna connect this fitting here. See what we get in pressure. Grand Prix don't have the greatest location for this. Snap that on there. And we're about 30 PSI, which it's almost 90 outside. That is a little bit low. And all we have to do to bump this up is we're just gonna hit this to the top like an aerosol can, which most of these should be upside down when you're injecting Freon, but not all of them. And if we look at it again, now we're about 35, which is closer to where you want it to be. Now, I think I'm gonna put it, because it is pretty hot outside, I'm gonna go for around 36, 37, but the important thing is you do not want to overfill these. Then when you're done, you just pull up on the sides and it releases and pulls right off. Then you make sure you put the cap back. And then we need to go test drive and see how it does. Just a couple extra things to mention here. First of all, when you go to check the refrigerant pressure, if it has no pressure in it, if it's leaked down to nothing, I would suggest not attempting to recharge it. Here's the reason why. If it's been empty, more than likely there's air that's gotten in there. That air needs to be removed and any moisture that's gotten in needs to be removed prior to being charged if you want the AC to work correctly. Also, if it is that low, you definitely have a significant leak somewhere and that's something that's gonna need to be addressed prior to trying to get it working again. I know specifically on Grand Prix, common leak points are down here at the compressor, either the front seal or at the back, the O-rings here, and where they go through the firewall, that bracket right there. These are really common leak points to check. But if you guys would like me to do a more in-depth video on AC, including additional repairs and how to diagnose leaks and stuff like that, please leave me a comment down there and let me know that you'd like to see that and I can put that together also. But for this video, I'm gonna keep it a little more simple.
Okay guys, so that's it. The AC has been charged, as you can see right here. It is nice and cold again. Everything is comfortable. So I'm gonna let this video go. Um, drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Let me know if you want me to do some more in-depth AC stuff. Um, I do already have one AC repair video that's planned, but that's as far as I've got planned ahead right now. And other than that, I will be out of here for this one, but I appreciate you guys watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Appreciate it.